Welcome back to Logic Basics. We're in the middle of categorical syllogisms. We are going to learn how to do a Venn diagram today. This is going to be exciting stuff, I think. Uh, let's see if I can get the handout in the screen here. And I will mute myself out. And let's, let's first talk about this. Um, validity of the categorical syllogism may be tested by Venn diagram. Do you know what a Venn diagram is? You may have done these in a math class. Uh, it's overlapping circles where you can see relationships between things. And uh, in math classes that I've had, we use two uh, circles. But in the Venn diagrams we're going to use today, there will be three circles. And the circles are going to represent the M term, the S term, and the P term. All right, after diagramming the premises only, notice the conclusion will be already in the diagram if the syllogism is valid. So we're going to diagram the, the premises, then we're going to put our pencil down, and the conclusion will show up where it's supposed to be if it's valid. I will show you how to do this. In order to diagram a syllogism, identify its mood and put it in its pure form using S, P, and M only. That's what we did previously when we made the mood and the figure together. Draw three overlapping circles for S, P, and M in that order. Number its parts, one through, through seven, in order. And I'm going to show you the order. It's, it's for the purposes of, of quizzes. So if you're taking this class, um, then I want you to do it exactly like I do it so I can grade you. Um, other professors do things in a different order, so if you were to Google this, or uh, go on YouTube and find another um, professor doing videos of uh, Venn diagrams, they may do a different order. So it's a convention, and I'm asking you to do it this way for the purposes of grading. Okay, diagram each premise only. We're going to diagram A and E, which are the universals, before I and O, which are the particulars, because the A and the E are going to be shaded, and that removes possibilities. So empty parts are shaded. What doesn't exist, what's not, we're going to shade, like almost like it's erased. We're going to use lines, and we're going to use an X for the particulars, I and O. So X is particular, shading is universal. E and A are shaded, I and O get an X. We're going to place an X on the line if it may belong to two areas. I'm going to show you that. And then we're going to check for validity. Is the conclusion already in the diagram? All right, now let's go back to the iPad. I left off, uh, I left this on from last time. Uh, these are the, let me make this bigger. These are the moods and the figures that we're looking at. And AII3, uh, we said it was valid. So I would like to do the Venn diagram for AII3 and show you how to set up the Venn diagram as we do that one. So if you can take out paper and pencil, we're going to make the, um, the model uh, Venn diagram. Didn't want to do that. We're going to make a model and I'll show you how to draw it first. We're going to need three overlapping circles. So do it just like this. One, two, three. Okay, and for convention's sake, just follow my example. S, P, M. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the middle. The numbering of these little segments will help us to uh, talk about what's shaded, okay? Now, the AII3 has these premises. We want to diagram the premises first, and uh, then the conclusion will show up, and it's valid, so we should definitely see the conclusion. So let's, let me just remind you that this is an A statement here. This is an I statement here. And the instructions tell us do the A or the E first. Do it by shading. So we're going to shade the A. What it's going to make us do is look at the relationship here. So this is saying all M is P. All M is P. So we're going to look at 
the relationship between the M circle and the P circle. It's telling us all of M lives in P, okay? So where does M and P overlap? Seven and six is where they overlap. So all of M is seven and six. So I'm going to erase M that is not in the P circle. So I'm going to just shade this out, meaning that does not exist anymore. It's almost as if I erased four and five. So all of M now is here in the P circle. So here's P and here's where M and P overlap. Okay. Now we look at the second premise, the minor premise, and it tells us some M is in S. There's at least one M that lives in S, all right? Now that's gonna get an X because I is a particular and particulars get an X. So let's look. Oh, look here. Here's where M and S overlap, seven, the segment seven. And that's where only, the only place M overlaps with S. So we're gonna put an X in seven. Okay, I hope you can see that. My X is in seven. Now I put the pencil down. I look at my conclusion. My conclusion says there's at least some S that is P. At least one S is in the P segment. Is that true? Let's see. It's right here. It's true. It's valid because the conclusion has an X where we would expect it to be. So the conclusion is some S is P and there's the S that's P, okay? Now, I feel like I should do this again um, for a couple more. It's maybe not clear yet. So let's clear this out. And I want to do AAA figure one for you. All right, so AAA one. What does AAA one look like? It looks like this. Here we have the M terms diagonal. Okay, and then we have our P term in the major premise, S term in the minor premise, and S and P in the conclusion. And this is AAA, so it's all is, all is, all is. So I'm going to fill that in. All M is P, all S is M, all S is P. Okay, now we need to distribute our little U's and little P's, and M, I mean A is uh, UP. So UP. U, P, U, P, okay? Now we're going to test it for validity the first way, and that is by looking at the distribution of the little U's and little P's. So let's first look at our S's. Here it's universal in the conclusion and it's universal in the premise. That's good, that checks out, right? Now let's look at our middle term. It's universal at least once, that checks out. Now let's look at our P terms. It's particular in the premise and particular in the conclusion. That is fine. So this is valid, yay. Now, uh, what does this look like on the Venn diagram? Let's draw it. Here's S, here's P, here's M. And I'm going to, oops, I said it but wrote something different. S, P, and M. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the middle. And notice these are all universals. The bo both of them are universals, so it's telling us to shade them. The first uh, premise says all M is P. So it's talking about the relationship between the M and the P again. All of M lives in P. It's the same as last time. Seven and six is where they overlap, so I'm gonna erase four and five because that's M that doesn't exist anymore because all of M is in P, and that's seven and six. Now, this tells us about S and M. All of S is in M. So now, we have to look at the S's that don't go in M. So here's, uh, let me use a different color here. Here's where S and M are overlapping right here. So we're gonna erase the S that's not in that overlapping part, and we're gonna erase it by shading Okay, here we go. And then we put our pencil down and the conclusion says all of S is in P. And that's true, it's right here. All of S that remains is in segment seven 
and that's what we would expect so this tells us it's valid yay we should do an invalid one though huh we should um i need to show you let's go back to those uh ieos let's do an ieo those are ones you won't do because i did them all for you ieo let's do three okay remember three is like this so we have our middle terms our uh what p s s p i is sum m is p no m is s sum s is not p well, let's distribute our little u's in little u little u's in little p so i is p p uh, e is U, U, and O is P, U. Okay, let's check our work. Uh, universal, middle, middle terms universal at least once. Uh, this is good. Oh, yeah, it was this one. Remember, this went from particular to universal. That was the illicit major. So let's test this on Venn diagram and look at what it looks like. Here's S, here's P, here's M. And let's number it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the middle. We're going to shade the universal first, and that would be the no. So let's look at the relationship. Now, no is going to get shaded uh, where it's not, okay? So no M is S. So M and S, that's the relationship it's talking about. There is no M that lives in that S, okay? So 4 and 7 are where M and S overlap. That's not anything for M, so we're going to erase that. There is no M that is an S. So we've just erased that relationship between S and the M. Now we can put an X for this major premise. Sum M is P. There is an M that is in the P section. Some M is P. So here is where 6 is where M and P overlap. So I'm going to put an X in there. Okay. Now I'm going to put the pencil down. And look at my conclusion. Uh, that's an S. It's messy. So the conclusion says some S is not P. There's at least one S that is not P. P, but we don't see that the s that's not p would be here this is where s doesn't overlap with p but the x is not here so the x is way over here which has nothing to do with this conclusion so we have to say the conclusion did not show up where we expected it in that segment one so it's invalid okay it's not where where it should be um, I think I'm going to pause here and let you work on that list that we had of the AAA, AEE, AII, AOO, EAE, EIO, IAI, and OAO figures one through four. And now I want you to do a Venn diagram for each. That's going to be a challenge. So you'll have 32 Venn diagrams to go with 32 problems. All right. Next time, we are going to go over different kinds of arguments. Um, we are going to go over rules of inference next time. It's going to be something different. And it's different because not all arguments are categorical syllogisms. There are different argument forms as well. That's what we're going to look at next time.